So what was the reason for casting Nicole in this role? She <laughs> owed, I owed her money. Oh, no. lots of money. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I very rarely have done this as a director. I, I, uh, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know Nicole. I, I work a lot of time with actors that I know or have met, or have like met in an actual audition process. But mm -hmm. because Nicole lives in Los Angeles, she had to submit the tape. But we had met briefly. And when I, for whatever reason, when I read the play, I just, I had this impulse, which was, oh, I bet, I bet she might be good. I have no idea why I feel this way, but I don't know, or I've, I hadn't even seen her perform. But I just, from the brief meeting, I somehow, and everybody said she was good, so that, there was that. <laughs> um, so I, so then she submitted a tape, and it was exactly what I, th you know, it was exactly what I had hoped it would be. And that was so. That was it. I, that was it. Was a pure impulse on my part <laughs> to read the play, and I thought, "Oh, I bet she would be good. I bet she she might she might do well." So that was why. Okay. And how did you feel when Matt offered you the role? Um, I was really excited. I told Matt. Uh, Matt. <laughs> the process was very strange. I think you followed me on Twitter, and I was like, "That's weird." I've had less than one conversation with Matt Pfeiffer in my life. And then one of our mutual friends called me and was like, is it okay if I give Matt Pfeiffer your information? <laughs> so it's like a very, oh, right. yeah, it's yeah, like a very yeah, strange yes. uh, process. But I, I told Matt pretty early on that I, like, um, that I wasn't sure how I felt about the play. Um, that it like made me kind of nervous. Yeah. Um, because it is, it, it, it does present a lot of challenges. Um, but I was really excited to work with Matt, uh, even though we hadn't met before. I've seen, I've seen a number of Matt Pfeiffer productions. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> I know. Yeah. They weren't. I did call them events. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, That's yeah, good. I've seen a number of uh, Matt's shows that he's directed and that he's been in, um, and so I was, I was really excited. I. I his his fame preceded him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. None of these things I'm saying are worthwhile. Well. <laughs> okay. Well, what was a typical rehearsal process working together like? It's been pretty easy, I think. Yeah. Uh, um, I think pretty pretty quickly we were like, oh, okay. Yeah. We like each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can hang out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I again, because I've, I've done a number of solo plays in my life, uh, both as a director and as an actor, and so I f think I have a pretty good vocabulary about how to do them. You know how long you, how many hours in a row you want to go. Um, you know, so it, 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 the, it, I think the only thing that would have made it complicated is if, is if one of us had chosen to complicate it. <laughs> as, as weird as that is to say, like no, it just seemed we, really like, like this was how it was going to work from yeah, the start. Yeah, and then we started to work. Yeah, so it's been it's been it's been fairly intuitive and and relaxed, and you know as we're doing this interview now, you know. We're only on the second day of tech. We've teched the show and run it. Yeah. So we're, you know, it's it's good to have, uh, you know, it, it's great when the actor is bringing everything to bear. You know, there's no, you know, Nicole's never, you know, marking through rehearsals. Everything is, you know, she's doing it full out. So it makes it very easy to sort of make progress if if the actor is throwing it out there. And, and that's definitely what she's been doing. So it, there's nothing to talk about. You just go, great, let's, you know, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what do you think Nicole's brought to the role of Bernadette? Well, guts. You know, I mean, that's the main reason you do the play is because people want to come and watch somebody do their thing. And, you know, and it takes guts to do that. It takes guts to put yourself out there and um, not bullshit about it. And that's definitely what she's done. There's no pretense about what she's doing. And she's, um, she's not been afraid at all to, you know, just go for it. That's what I think. That's what we pay to see actors do. We pay to see them do something. I see. I don't. I, I'm always careful not to throw the word courage around because I think courage should be reserved for those who actually lay down their life to do something courageous. But there is something about um, what actors at their best do is courageous. That they're willing to go out there and um, exp you know put themselves on display and and not apologize for it. And that's a uh, I think that's what we come to, to see at the theater. We come to see heroism and courage. We come to see people do stuff that we wouldn't do ourselves. Um, and so that's been, I think, that's what's happening here, I think. I think, I believe. <laughs> um, what interesting discoveries did each
each of you have um, about Bernadette and the coming of age journey that teenagers go through today? I think probably that it's it's not different. I mean, yeah. I am I am not sixteen <laughs> by a long shot. Um, but I, the circumstances are different. But I think the feelings of some of a lot of the things are similar and hold true. And I think that there are are moments in this that I'm sure both of us can relate to. Yeah. Um, kind of just. Uh, getting like punched in the stomach and surprised by something or um, I don't know I yeah I think and also I think the big discoveries for me have been just how well um, just how well the language works you know that what he's written I think works really well um, and that the problems or questions or challenges of the piece um, do not merit being answered. Um, their challenges or questions or problems that need to be met. Um, by which I mean, I've discovered that you just go, yeah, there's no real answer for this. We're just going to give our best impulse to it and let the audience figure out what how it feels. Well, and I think that's interesting too because uh, a lot of those things that I felt were problems or challenges are now like, I do not think of that way, and yeah. I don't think that's because we've figured it out, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we've just figured out how to operate in it. Yeah. And what do you think is the key to presenting a single actor play? Um, again, I think, I think conviction, I think. Mm -hmm. I think not being afraid to be, you know, to, to expose yourself in that way and, and to, you know, to go for it. It's not, I mean, one of the things we asked earlier about, like, what makes it an exile play? We have tried really hard to not be a company that does navel gazing plays. You know, we've tried really hard to do plays that have to be dealt with right here and now. And there is a because the the writing of this play is very lyrical and poetic, um, you know, and Salinger esque. That lends itself to be a little bit more, more navel gazing. <laughs> How do I say that? Navelly gazily. It's like that's the that's the uh, Ned Flanders version. Um, but like it, this kind of writing lends itself to being a little too introspective, uh, so the challenge is to to do it in a way that feels like it's it's immediate and has to be dealt with now. Um, so I, I I think that that that's how I feel about it. What about you, Nicole? Being the person doing it. <laughs> this is my first one, personally. <laughs> um, so I trust Matt blindly. Um, <laughs> blindly? No. Uh, I, I do trust uh, Matt and kind of where he's been trying to take me in things. But I, I also, we've talked about, even though it is uh, a one-person play, it's still, um, you're still having a conversation, even if it's with yourself or the universe or an audience or... Um, it, it, because if you're not, then we are staring at our navels and nobody wants to watch one person do that. Um, maybe two. But definitely not one person on their own do that. So no, and so like just because it, there's a lot, just because a lot of it is an intellectual poetic pursuit, doesn't mean that it doesn't have a visceral quality. It doesn't mean it has an, It doesn't mean that it doesn't have an immediate quality, or that it requires great strength to do it. And that there, there are this play is even though it it, it has poetical language and it is pretty lyrical, and there are moments. Uh, it's like kind of playing the stars moments. Um, the actual basis of the play is a lot of action. There's yeah. a lot that happens, that yeah. physically has to happen in the play in yeah. order for things to happen. Um, so I think that that really helps move it along, too. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think audiences can expect to take away from the play? I hope, you know, a unique experience. I hope an experience that, that is, um, is unlike any they've had before. And I think, uh, I think hearing a voice that is not often showcased in the theater. Um, you know, that of a, of a young girl. And I, and I think more specifically, too, uh, we were kind of talking about this a little bit the other day, um, but the, the voice of a young girl who's not, she's not stupid. Stupid <laughs> things happen to her, but there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of portrayals of women 
that like are really smart, empowered women, except that they're stupid about this thing. And um, she's not stupid. She's really smart. She's just in this kind of stupid situation. So what you're saying is Adam Rapp is not Aaron Sorkin. That's what you're saying. <laughs> that is exactly what I'm saying. No I'm offense, Aaron Sorkin. Um, but your women are stupid. Okay, yes. so the last question. Um, if you guys could work together again, what show do you want to work on? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. I've, I always wanted... I've always... I, I had this nagging, for whatever reason, I had this nagging n desire to want to do St. Joan at some point. Shaw St. Joan, so. Hmm. I thought you'd be good. You'd be a good Joan of Arc, I think. I like my hair, though. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe that. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, we've... We have talked so much about Romeo and Juliet. I feel like that, that yeah, would be... Yeah, it would be fun to do it. We've both done it. We've both done it. So. interesting experience for us to have. Yeah. But I, I wish, I wish, I don't, I don't have a play that I want to do with Matt. I love, I love Matt. It's not about that. <laughs> I, but I, I, I have a play that I hope Matt is in. I hope Matt is in, um, of course it is now gone from, my, take me out. I feel like <laughs> it's like the perfect combination of Matt's interests. Um, but I have to play, but I'd have to play the gay lawyer. But you'd be so about, good. But it's not anything about oh, baseball. Matt, no. You'd be so good. Oh, God. It breaks my heart even thinking about it. It'd be great. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Come see the show. Yeah.